Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've done a lot of talking on the channel over the years about specific passenger trains and what they do, but one thing I haven't really looked at are all the various individual freight trains that run all over the US. Because there are indeed specific freight trains that do specific jobs on a regular schedule, just like a passenger train. And I think it's also really important to study freight trains on a more in-depth level because it gives you a better understanding of how all sorts of things move and just how critical the national freight rail network really is. So today, I'd like to start off another new video series where we take a look at a freight train and follow it around to see what exactly it does. And I figured the perfect place to do that would be right here in my own backyard in Washington State because there are so many different mixed goods trains carrying all sorts of supplies and raw materials that makes it easy to see just how everything fits together. So with that, let's jump right in and get started. For this introductory video, I wanted to pick a freight train that I could cover in great detail. Most of the other videos in this series probably will not be this in depth, but I wanted to showcase a train where I could show everything it does on a typical day and where it goes as a solid jumping off point. So for that, we once again travel to the city of Bellingham, Washington to look at a BNSF freight train that is known officially as RNWE 803, although I've heard this particular run or job referred to as the Ferndale Turn or the Bellingham Local, which is the name I like to use. The R in the designation RNWE 803 means that this train is classified as a road switcher. Road switchers travel on the main line or road, switching out the various industries along the way. In contrast, yard switcher jobs switch out rail yards or sometimes move cars from one yard to another. So, this train is a road switcher in the NW or Northwest Division of BNSF assigned to job number 803. It travels between Bellingham, Washington and Custer, Washington, serving all the industries across this section of BNSF's Bellingham subdivision, the rail line that runs between Everett, Washington and the U.S.-Canadian border at Blaine. In this video, we will follow the 803 on a typical day's work. At this point, I'd like to mention that many local trains do not serve every industry on the route on the same day. Rail traffic can depend on a variety of things, including seasonal shifts in demand and supply of various commodities, as well as the day of the week. Speaking of days of the week, the 803 is typically a Monday through Friday run, although this can once again depend on seasonal demand as well as any planned track work. For the purposes of this video, I've combined multiple days of operation for this train to give you an idea of all the industries the 803 serves. The story of the Bellingham local really begins before the train crew even starts their day's work. A northbound daily manifest mixed freight train arrives in town in the morning and comes to a stop next to the rail yard in Bellingham. This train is recognized as M-EVECUS, an M or manifest train running between EVE or Everett Washington and CUS or Custer. The train crew makes a set out in Bellingham for the 803. These cars are typically placed on the head end of the EVE CUS for the ease of the switching operation. Any locomotives needed for the 803 are also set out by this manifest. With the switching job done, the EVE CUS continues up the big hill out of Bellingham toward Custer, which is now about 15 miles away. The 803 usually begins its day sometime in between mid-morning and midday, shortly after the morning northbound Amtrak train has passed by. The locomotives, often referred to as power for the train, are stationed in front of the old Great Northern Passenger Station, which is now used as BNSF's main offices in Bellingham. Locomotives used for this job are usually from the General Motors Electromotive Division General Purpose, or GP, series of units and include types GP39-3, GP38-2, GP40E, 
GP50, GP25 downgraded from a GP50, and very occasionally types GP60 or GP60M. Typically, two units are used for this train placed back to back with operator cabs facing out on both ends. With the line clear, the crew climbs aboard and brings the locomotives a couple blocks to the north from the old depot to the rail yard where they will begin putting their train together. This process can take anywhere from just under an hour to a couple hours depending on how complicated the train makeup is. Cars are organized by type and destination, making for the easiest car setouts and pickups while out of the yard and on the road. The train has been put together and with a green signal it begins to head up the hill. Immediately to the northwest of the yard, it crosses a bridge over Squalicum Creek, Squalicum Way, and the former Milwaukee Road Line to Sumas, Washington. A little further down, GP60M number 128 is on the point of this day's train as it passes Mount Baker Products, an industry we will visit later on in the video. The grade in this area is just over 1%. At Squalicum Beach, the train passes over one of the tallest bridges on the entire line, a 544 foot long, approximately 60 foot high, girder span built in 1940 over Little Squalicum Creek. Shortly after passing over the bridge, the 803 comes to a stop to serve the first set of industries. A few businesses are located here off of Marine Drive. The first is the Lehigh Cement Company which receives short covered hopper cars from the 803. Across Marine Drive from the Cement Company is the Osier Company which has been in business since 1929 and makes utility poles from locally sourced timber. Finished poles are shipped on flat cars with side braces, sometimes called skeleton log cars. If poles are long enough that they overhang past the end of the flat car, a second spacer or idler flat is used to provide a buffer between the poles and the next car on the train. More Steel, located right next to Osier, has also on occasion received gondola cars from the 803. 
The crew brings the power for 803 East across Marine Drive to pick up a load of brand new utility poles from Osier to be shipped all across the country. Empty cars are first spotted to be loaded at the facility and then loads picked up and brought back west across the street. Mount Baker's distant peak can be seen in the background. has completed the set out and pickup and will now connect to the rest of the train before proceeding north. As seen from Marine Drive Park, the crew of 803 has the train rolling again with the waters of Puget Sound below. On this particular day, the lead locomotive is running with the cab at the rear in a configuration that is frequently called Long Hood Forward. Around the next corner, the train passes under Marine Drive. Eight oh three comes around a curve at the Country Lane Railroad Crossing. Rail enthusiasts may notice the lone mechanical warning bell at this crossing, the last of its kind in Bellingham. Just after crossing Country Lane, the train passes Silva Star Forest Products, a lumber supplier. Because of the way this industry spur is built, it must be served by trains moving in a southbound direction. So 803 continues past the industry for now, making a stop on the southward trip back to Bellingham. The train crosses Rural Avenue and comes around another curve, leaving the city of Bellingham behind and entering Ferndale. Immediately after crossing into the city of Ferndale, the 803 makes its second stop to perform an industry set out. 
This is Republic Services, a company that handles shipment of trash and recyclables all across Washington. Garbage is brought by truck from Bellingham and the surrounding communities to this facility at the southern edge of Ferndale, where it is loaded into these gray intermodal shipping containers, which are in turn placed into well cars. 803 then picks up the loaded containers for eventual shipment to Roosevelt, Washington along the Columbia River, where the containers are loaded onto trucks and taken a short distance to the Roosevelt Regional Landfill. This process is repeated in many communities throughout western Washington. 803 switches out the Republic Services spur, setting out empty trash containers and picking up the loads. This maneuver can take anywhere from 30 minutes to over an hour and is done just about every day that 803 operates. Once the train is back together, 803 continues north passing Tennant Lake and crossing Hovander Road. In downtown Ferndale, the train crosses the Through Trust Bridge over the Nooksack River and then makes its third stop at the Cargill Grain Elevator. This facility supplies grain for animal feed and is one of the biggest customers for the 803. It has been in business since 1936. Long covered hopper cars are spotted at the elevator and are moved into place by small vehicles known as trackmobiles. Like Republic Services, 803 makes setouts or pickups here on just about every day it runs. Switching the mill can be a complex process that takes upwards of an hour, especially if there are southbound trains waiting on the siding at Ferndale to continue their journey toward Everett. Once the grain elevator switching is complete, 803 rockets northward the last five miles to Custer coming around a curve at Aldergrove. Upon exiting the curve, the train flies across Highway 548.
803 has reduced speed as it approaches the yard at Custer along Portal Way. A restricting signal indication means the train must slow to visible stopping distance upon entering yard limits. Custer is the northern end of the line for the 803. At this point, the local drops its cars on a siding next to the main track, with the exception of empties destined for Silva Star or some of the industries back in Bellingham. In the evening, the southbound Custer to Everett manifest will pick up these cars and bring them down to Everett, where they will be sorted and placed onto the correct train to get to their destinations. The two locomotives are turned on the Y track located here so that the same locomotive leading the train north will also bring it back south to Bellingham. That is, if there is a train to bring back, if there are no empty center beam flat cars to deliver to Silva Star or some of the other businesses back in Bellingham, the two locomotives will proceed alone or light back south. Once the train has been given the clear signal, 803 returns home. The train re-enters the city limits of Bellingham and makes a stop at Silva Star to pick up center beam flats loaded with lumber and drop off any empties. Gate 03 passes under Marine Drive with a fairly long southbound train. The Bellingham Yard is just a few minutes away.
The local comes to a stop at the north end of the yard, but the day is not quite over for the crew. There are two more industries that need to be switched. Both are located immediately to the west of the Bellingham Yard on the former Milwaukee Road line. 803 pulls just south of the spur to the old Milwaukee Road, the switch is thrown, and the train backs across Rotor Avenue. Bellingham Cold Storage is located right along the water and receives refrigerator cars for shipment of perishables including seafood. Mount Baker Products, located just a little bit to the northwest, receives boxcars that are used to carry sheets of plywood and various engineered wood products. 803 drops boxcars just short of the business and another trackmobile is used to move them into position. At last, the work is done for the day. The crew spots any loaded refrigerator or boxcars in the yard for the next day's 803 to bring up to Custer. Finally, the locomotives can be returned to their spot in front of the depot as the day's work comes to a close. Well, that's the story of the Bellingham Local. Thanks for joining me for this video and I really hope I was able to demonstrate just how important freight trains are even with just one local. So for just this one train, just to recap, we have utility poles that are going to be used for telephone, cable, electricity, and so on, steel, cement, lumber boards, plywood, seafood, and other various cold perishables, and feed for livestock. And that's just one train, multiply that by all the hundreds of local freights that run all across the country on a daily basis. Railroads really do keep the country moving and freight trains are absolutely essential to that. So if you like this video and want to see more of these freight train profiles in the future, definitely let me know down in the comments section. Also a big thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. If you're not subscribed, don't miss out come along and click the subscribe button and ring the bell. And then there's all the other content on my social media pages and all of that. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time for another railroad themed adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.